let's look into the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat. Here's a quick example. In a random sample of 200 parts from a manufacturing process, 18 had major manufacturing defects. Here p hat, the sample proportion, is 18 out of 200, or 0.09. p hat represents the proportion of individuals or objects in the sample that have a certain characteristic. In statistical inference scenarios, we use the sample proportion p hat to estimate the population proportion p. To develop the proper inference procedures, we need to know the characteristics of the sampling distribution of p hat, and that's what we're going to investigate in this video. I'm going to assume in this video that we are sampling from an infinite population, or that we are sampling only a small fraction of a large population. That is typically the case in practice. The situation changes a little bit if we are sampling a larger fraction of a finite population. We can view the sample proportion p hat as x over n, where x is a random variable that represents the number of individuals in the sample with the characteristic of interest, and n represents the total number of individuals in the sample. In many cases, x can be thought of as a binomial random variable with parameters n and p. So the sampling distribution of p hat is based on the binomial distribution. Like the binomial random variable x, the sample proportion p hat is a discrete random variable. When we draw a sample, p hat will take on one of n plus 1 possible values. 0, 1 over n, 2 over n, up through 1. The probabilities of these values will correspond to the probabilities that the binomial random variable x takes on the values 0, 1, 2, up through n. Recall that a binomial random variable x has a mean of n times p, has a variance of n times p times 1 minus p, and, due to the central limit theorem, is approximately normally distributed for large sample sizes. We are going to use these characteristics to derive the characteristics of the sampling distribution of p hat. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat? The mean or expectation of p hat is the expectation of x over n. And recall that when we multiply a random variable by a constant, the expectation gets multiplied by that constant. So we can take this 1 over n out front in front of the expectation. And we end up with this. And since the expectation of x is n times p, as we just saw, this is equal to 1 over n times n p, which is simply equal to p. On average, the sample proportion equals the population proportion, and so we say that the sample proportion p hat is an unbiased estimator of the population proportion p. What is the variance of the sampling distribution of p hat? The variance of p hat is equal to the variance of x over n. And recall that when we multiply a random variable by a constant, the variance gets multiplied by the square of that constant. So we can take 1 over n out front, but we need to square it. And we end up with this. And we know the variance of x is n times p times 1 minus p. So the variance of p hat is equal to p times 1 minus p over n. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat is just the square root of that. The square root of p times 1 minus p over n. The sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal if the sample size is large. This is, once again, the central limit theorem at work. But there is a bit of a complication. The sample size required to achieve approximate normality depends on the value of p. If p is close to 0.5, the sample size does not need to be very large. But if p is close to 0 or 1, a much larger sample size is required. So it's tough to give a simple, all-encompassing rule for when the normal approximation is reasonable. Here is the exact sampling distribution of p hat when n is 25 and p is 0.5. It's just the binomial distribution with a rescaled x-axis. Here, p hat can take on one of 26 possible values. 
0, 1 over 25, 2 over 25, all the way up through 25 over 25, or 1. The probabilities are very close to 0 for values of p hat near 0 or 1, so they're a little hard to see in this plot. The sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat is centered here at the value of p, 0.5. And when p is equal to 0.5, the distribution is perfectly symmetric. There will be some skewness when p is not 0.5. We can see that p hat has a discrete probability distribution. But if we superimposed a normal curve with the appropriate mean and standard deviation, we can see that the normal distribution closely approximates it, even with a sample size of only 25. Now I'm going to increase the sample size and we'll see what happens. I'm going to leave the x-axis unchanged in these plots, but the scaling on the y-axis will change from plot to plot, so I'm going to take out the labeling on the y-axis. The normal curves that will be plotted all have an area of 1. Here's the sampling distribution of p hat for a sample size of 50, which looks a little more normal, and for a sample size of 100, it looks more normal still. A superimposed normal curve seems to fit this distribution very closely. We didn't need all that large a sample size for the normal approximation to be reasonable when p is 0.5. But when p is closer to 0 or 1, there's going to be some skewness, and a larger sample size will be needed for the normal approximation to be reasonable. Let's look at that. Here's the sampling distribution of p hat when n is 25 and p is 0.04 we can see that there is some right skewness. To make some features a little bit easier to see, I'm going to restrict the plot to values of the sample proportion between 0 and 0.2. Here's the plot for values of p hat between 0 and 0.2. And if we superimpose the appropriate normal curve, it doesn't fit the distribution all that closely. But if we increase the sample size, we will see that the distribution becomes more and more normal. Here's a sample size of 50, and here's a sample size of 100. If we superimpose a normal curve, it's looking a little more normal, but it's still not all that close. Here's a sample size of 200, and a sample size of 400, which looks a lot more normal. For a sample size of 800, it's looking more normal still. And if we superimpose the appropriate normal curve, it fits the distribution quite well. So that's the situation when p is close to 0. For values of p close to 1, we see something very similar, just the mirror image of what we see here. Let's take a very quick look at that. Here's the sampling distribution of p hat when n is 25 and p is 0.96. We see some left skewness and the distribution isn't very normal. But if we increase the sample size to 50 and then to 100, it's looking a little more normal, but we can still see some left skewness. If we increase the sample size to 200, it's looking more normal, 400, more normal still, and at 800, it's looking pretty darn normal. If we superimpose a normal curve, it fits pretty well. When p is close to 0.5, we don't need a very large sample size for the normal approximation to be reasonable. But when p is close to 0 or 1, a larger sample size is required. That notion is summarized in the following rough guideline. The sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal if n times p is at least 15, and n times 1 minus p is at least 15. There are other guidelines we could use, and some sources might recommend a number that is different from 15, but this is a reasonable guideline. Overall, in summary, for large sample sizes, the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal, with a mean of p and a variance of p times 1 minus p over n. We will use these characteristics of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat to construct appropriate confidence intervals and hypothesis tests for the population proportion p.